Well, hello, Rinconians. It's Rincon Steve. Thank you for tuning in. In this particular segment, we're talking about our teardrop camper build. And uh, in this segment, we're going to talk a lot about how to put the teardrop together. Okay, I'm just about ready to cut my openings for the storage deck. And the yeah. other thing that I'm considering is the fact I have this cooler. So in, under this piece of plywood is that storage area. So I'm gonna cut lids in on this. And uh, this is gonna be on slides. So when you slide it out, you can get to the lid underneath. And in this area, I'm gonna have cabinet doors and there'll be a lid on the floor. So I've just figured out my dimensions. Each one has been modified, so I can take that piece of plywood out now to get it all figured out and cut those. Okay, I'm just about ready to router this out. What I've done is I've just put uh, pieces of one by material for my router edge to run against with those openings laid out. So let's get to it. Okay, there we are. I'll just take the backing off here and put that into place. All right, that's the way that stays in there. Good storage for tools, don't you think? Um, before I fasten this down, though, two things I gotta do. One, I wanna put more urethane in here before I put the lid on. And I probably should get that back wall on because we screw it through the, you know, not, I, I guess I could still screw it, but I think it's better if I do it um, before I put this on. One more thing, <laughs> can't forget this. So lid, I gotta make lids, right, that fit in this. So if I make a lid this size, it's gonna fall through. I have uh, aluminum strips I gotta put on the back side to hold the lid on. So that's, that's uh, probably the most important thing. I could poly and screw the other thing on without that, but got to do that. All right, I just got the aluminum edge on here. One problem though, no aluminum edge. I didn't buy enough. I was short probably about this much too. All right, so now I'm cutting uh, the, the doors, the, the um, what do you call them, the lids set in here. So I've just cut them width-wise, now I'm going to cut them to length. Okay, so uh, I've got my shelf in here. I've got the lids made. So this part's all done, and now I'm just laying out now for the this, this wall, the bulkhead they call it. Um, I've got my lines. I'm going to drill some holes so I can screw it in. And the piece is right here. The other thing I've done is I've uh, made my shelf for the cooler. That's going to go right there too. Um, I think I have it right. We'll see. And so I'm just about ready to get this together. So let's see how this turns out. So last time we talked, <clears throat> I think I had just finished the uh, hatches here. <clears throat> and this is uh, the one from the other side. And so since then I've made my see I made my uh, drawer uh, and that's just the drawer that will get mounted between the two partitions here I've uh, installed the bulkhead here this has been screwed in on the sides um, as you can see here I've also the side I've uh, just given it a slight arch because it goes my drawer front here goes from like 16 plus 17 inches I think to here to like 14 inches so I just gave it a kind of a slight arch on it. I'm going to cover that with birch edging. We'll iron on that so that it'll look finished. And then the front of this drawer will get a piece of birch as well. 
I, I got to cut it to length, but it'll just fit in past there. And this is where the refrigerator is going to sit and this will slide in and out. So I'll show you when we get to that point. So I'm just about ready to fasten this in. You see I drilled some pocket screws. And in order to keep it square, because the pocket screws tend to pull it away from where you want it, I've just clamped some sticks to where it needs to be exactly. And you can see I'm, I'm square side to side and up and down. So let's uh, let's see what we can do to fasten this together here. All right, we'll get the rest of those in. Okay, I think I just got everything set as far as fitting this cooler. I think I got it all worked out. So right now this drawer is fully extended <clears throat> and with the, there'll be a counter here, kind of simulated by that board, um, that just clears to lift straight up. Now the, the issue is, will it fit under that counter? So here we go. Ooh, look at that. With nothing to spare. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> here's the thing. See the gap difference? little this one sitting right down on it and this goes up and that's because there's a couple screws on the bottom of this they're probably holding a compressor on but just to show you what I did it's a piece of three-quarter I'm gonna face this off I drilled holes for the feet so those feet are three quarters of an inch deep got three quarters of an inch of our board and then that top sits about a half inch above the floor, so it clears the lid. And uh, <clears throat> the other thing is, if you can see it in the back here, those hinges touch the bulkhead, <clears throat> which I think is just going to, uh, there might be an issue here with this handle. This is plastic, I can always trim this a little bit, but we'll see, that can come off and we can adjust that. Otherwise, I feel really good about, well, let me just tell you what I had to do. From the plans, I moved the bulkhead back a half inch to get the extra width, and I raised this a half inch. So that's the sacrifice for a bigger cooler, but I think it was important to have a big cooler. The other question is, um, am I gonna get good airflow? Um, so we got a pretty good gap here for air and air on the front. Um, obviously this one's going to be restricted. There's another one back here, which, um, has about a half inch. And I'm thinking of drilling holes for those screws underneath and maybe I'll just make some holes. So it, I don't know if it make a difference for venting there or not, but we'll have to see how it goes. But I, I feel good about this opening and uh, we should be all right. Well, good morning, Rinconians. It's a new day. I didn't do any videoing yesterday. Um, some of the, a lot of the stuff I was doing was just kind of uh, a lot of thought and me just trying to figure nothing worth seeing. But I do want to show you the end result. So I, I think I get everything worked out here with our cooler in our, our uh, little stove so you can see this I'll put a I'll put a handle on this probably just so you can pull it from the center so where that stick is that's where the counter should end I just put that on there to center our divider so it works really nice and here is the stove. This is just a block. I was trying to simulate the fascia just to get my height for the um, cabinet underneath. But I was happy with the way this, so this is just like a little countertop, a little storage area I was thinking for silverware and that sort of thing. It's 
So that just kind of incorporates that. Little concern here, <clears throat> this is where the counter ends. You can see how close we are. I think we just clear the stove, uh, but that's too close. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is wrap, I might just do stain the steel on the countertop, which then will come down around here. That will take care of that. I think it just is gonna generate a little too much heat that close. All right, so today we're going to get on this cabinet face. They're just going to be uh, two doors to get into that space, which I think will work well. And uh, get on to our countertop and onto these other cabinets. All right, I'm just about ready to screw uh, this uh, panel in. You can see I got the fascia or drawer front, if you will, onto the grill unit so we'll put a pull on this so it'll be right in the front and I'll have doors on this Dang it! That's not good. Amazing how quick this sets. We'll get a ton more of these in and this thing will be getting tighter. Okay, yesterday was a pretty good day. It's a new day now. Um, see, we finished up our, our uh, stove top with our maple front. Added our uh, cabinet face that we'll put doors over soon. Um, installed our shelf, which goes all the way through with a maple edge, and then our bulkhead divider here, which you can see is we got to cut an angle here and it's flush with the, the top ceiling. The ceiling will come to here. So we're going to get on to now our next cabinet, the upper one. Uh, this isn't as straightforward as I'd like. I um, got a microwave that I get a plane on fitting in here. And, uh, and a shelf. 
And, uh, and that should do it in the back here as far as our design issues. Otherwise, everything else should be pretty straightforward as far as our uh, initial drawing. Okay, just wanted to show you the face with the microwave. This is just mocked up, basically. Um, my wife and I just debated whether the microwave should go here or there. Of course, a lot of it had to do with the range, if you're cooking. She didn't like the idea of opening, if necessary, the microwave when you've got stuff here. What I didn't like about this is I'm losing space here because this door needs about a half inch in order to clear the hinge. It's only a half inch, so I suppose that's fine. But anyway, so that's the layout and uh, we're gonna get to cutting uh, the end here and, and the shelf. And this is actually going to be, uh, the shelf is gonna be set down here. I'm gonna have a three quarter inch uh, lip here. Uh, some people build little rails. I'm just gonna have a three quarter inch rail here. I think that's, that's enough. I don't really like those decorative rails that you see with little dowels and things. I think just straight lines are nice. All right, we're going to get started on the cabinets inside. Maybe I should rephrase that. I've gotten started on the cabinets inside. <laughs> Actually, I made this face a couple weeks ago while I was waiting for materials. And uh, so since we've gotten our shelf and the bulkhead in, now we can move forward with that. Um, what I just did, I don't know if you can see it, I put a block on the end, which matched the arch on the top. That face is just sitting on there right now. So I've got to cut this angle on the end here. But uh, these blocks are just scribed and just glued and stapled on as a, as a place to fasten the face. And I'm just going to use a piece of half inch plywood on the, for the bottom of that. And uh, yeah. Okay, I feel like we had a good day yesterday. We pretty much have that whole galley area all figured out and put together. Uh, the only other thing I'm gonna add are doors. I have a hatch here. And I'm gonna do a little, something a little different here. We'll talk about that later. But there will be a covering for that type of door. On the inside, at the end of the day, I got together the back. Cabinet. Get the floor in. Bottom, whatever you want to call it. And the top will be when we get the ceiling on. We've got one more to do right here. And uh, I've got the face for that already made up, so that should go pretty quick. So really the next step here, once I get that together, will be getting the pylon skin on this side. Uh, because we need this closed off to start putting our ceiling rafters, if you will, in. So uh, this will start to be self-contained. And the other thing is once we get the, the skin on, we can put the doors on. Anyway, uh, we've made some good progress. I always appreciate any comments that anyone has. I'm always surprised uh, when I hear people say, oh, I've been watching your videos. Um, sometimes uh, I like to say, well, Make a comment. I like to hear from you rather than be surprised later on, you know, after I don't know how many times I've been posting videos and they say, oh, yeah, I see you making a camper. Um, anyway, always appreciate any comments. Thumbs up. Subscriptions. Click the bell notice. All right, everyone. Take care.